Hello everyone, uh, welcome to today's webinar. Today we're gonna uh, cover the last section on the last unit in Algebra 1. We're gonna still look at algebraic fractions, but today we're gonna look at how to solve algebraic equations. This is myself. My name is Miriam. I'm your math instructor here at Penn Foster. Um, I am certified to teach high school math in the state of Pennsylvania, and also I have my master's degree in education. Today in this webinar, we're going to go over the most challenging topics or, or questions or problems that you may see through your unit and you may see also in your exam. Uh, of course, I'm going to give you, I'm not going to give you the exact questions in the exam, but the level of difficulty of this webinar matches, in my opinion, the level of difficulty of that exam uh, for uh, unit six. Uh, participants are able to um, do the self-check questions and those questions are not graded, of course, those questions are um, given in my webinars to give you a, a chance to assess yourself and see where you are standing uh, from each topic that we discuss today within our webinar. So feel free to share your input or um, answers for those questions. As we go through the webinar, if you have any questions relevant to the topics that we cover today, you are able to type in your answers in the questions box. I'll be able to read your question and also uh, answer and see who asked the question. Um, the, the, the whole idea of having a live webinar with a live person um, behind the screen here is to uh, respond to any questions that you have in mind um, during our discussion today. All registrants will receive a recording to um, the webinar. Uh, if you happen not to get to get the email for the follow-up email for the recording, all of the webinars, including this today, um, will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. I'm going to show you with the link for that. So if you've missed any previous webinars and you would like to look or watch the recorded webinars for any of the previous units, you are able to. Today we're going to look at two topics, but the main one is how to solve algebraic equations. But we're also going to look at how to simplify complex fractions. So a complex fraction would look like that. It is a fraction that has fractions on the numerator and the denominator. How can we simplify this fraction? Now notice that this example does not have any variables or any um, kind of trinomials or binomials. I just chose to go with numbers first. We can understand the idea first and then apply that to algebraic complex fractions. Um, on my screen here, if you if you see in the on the slides, you'll see those little notes on the right hand side of the screen. Those are summary for uh, the steps that we take to look at specific type of problems. If you want to write them down on your notebook, or if you want to keep them handy, so you don't have to go back and forth in your unit to uh, look up what should I do to simplify a complex fraction. In this problem. Um, we need to simplify the fraction, but, but we have a problem here. We have a problem that we have to solve before we're able to simplify the fraction. We have an addition problem on the top. We have an, an, a subtraction problem on the bottom. And having these on our top and bottom of our fraction, we are not able to do anything unless we actually add and subtract. Now, when you add fractions that have no common denominators, 6 and 12 are not common denominators, then we need to remember how we found the common denominator, the least common denominator LCD. And from there, we're able to find um, the equivalent fractions on the top, and we're able to add them, and then we're able to simplify the fraction. So let's do that together. So I'm going to look at the top part as an individual problem. I'm adding 5 6 plus 3 over 12. Now again, 6 and 12 are different denominators we are not able to add. So we need to think, how can I switch 6 to 12? Well, I know that 12 is a multiple of 6. So if I multiply 6 times 2, and I have to do the same thing on the, on the fraction on the top, times 2 for the 5, then I'm going to be able to have this on the top of my fraction. It's going to be 10 over 12 
because 5 times 2 is 10 and 6 times 2 is 12 and then plus 3 over 12. Now for the top part I'm able to add the fractions but this is only the numerator. I have another problem in the denominator and the, the problem is similar different denominators and we have 7 and 21. So from looking at the numbers well, 21 is a multiple of 7, so 7 times 3 will give us the 21. So 21 in that case will be the common denominator for both of these fractions, times 3 on the top to keep the fraction the same. So on the bottom, we're going to have 10 over 21, that's unchanged, minus 6 over 21. Now, we are able to go ahead and actually add and subtract. So we have the same denominators, then we're going to keep the same denominators since we're adding then add 10 plus 3 will give you 13 on the top. That's the numerator. The denominator is similar, it's just a subtraction problem, 21 as a common denominator, then 10 minus 6 will give you 4. Now, this answer is not the simplest form. We still have a complex fraction. We need to simplify that fraction. And from there, here's the new things that we're going to learn. To simplify a complex fraction, we're going to treat that problem as a division problem. This is as if we are seeing this problem, 13 over 12 divided by 4 over 21. If you go back to our basic math um, units, we learned that dividing fractions is the same as multiplying the reciprocal of the second fraction, meaning that I am able to evaluate this or simplify by writing this problem as 13 over 12 times the reciprocal is just the, the flip of the second fraction, 21 over 4. That's it. And from here, we're able to multiply. So again, multiplying the reciprocal is the same as dividing over the original fraction. So when we multiplied fraction back in the days when we learned how to multiply fractions, we use the cancellation method first to simplify our problem before going ahead and multiplying and having huge numbers in our numerators and denominators. To do that, to simplify or to, to use the cancellation method, I'm going to look at the tops and the bottoms. I'm going to try to find any common factors that I'm going to be able to eliminate. So 21 and 12, I know that both of them are multiples of Three. So 3 is a common factor. Eliminate that by dividing over 3 and divide over 3. So that problem comes becomes 13 over 4 times 7 over 4. Now nothing else I am able to um, I am able to uh, eliminate. Remember that 4 and 4 will not cancel out uh, together because 4 and 4 both are in the denominators. So we can just gonna have to um, multiply across. 13 times 7 will give you 91 over 4 times 4 will give you 16. That would be your answer, or if you would like to put it in a mixed number form, you are able to, or you can leave it like the one above there. So this one or that one would be the simplified answer. So we started out with a huge problem with a complex fraction, but really this came down to only 91 over 16. So the main idea, before I proceed to the algebraic side of things, the main idea is I need to treat that division as multiplication like when we used to do that with simple fractions. The same rule applies when you um, deal with problems like that, that have x's and x squares. The same idea. So. Since we have one fraction on the top and one fraction on the bottom, I am ready to think about this problem as a multiplication problem. So I'm going to see, I'm going to rewrite that just to have the visual, uh, you know, um, representation of that division in an easier way or a more familiar way to me. And I did not change anything here. I'm just 
telling myself that this is a division problem. And then I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch that to multiplication times flip the second fraction. And that's it. And now we need to simplify using the cancellation method. We're going to see if anything can cancel out. So on the top and the bottom, I see that 15 is a multiple of 5. 5 can be eliminated. So I'm going to divide over 5. Divide over 5 and divide over 5. So, so far, we're going to have 11x over 3 times 1 over 2x squared. The 2 and 11, nothing common. 2 and 1, nothing. 11 and 3, nothing. And 3 and 1, nothing. But the variables, I see x and x squared. Well, x over x squared will give you x on the bottom, on the denominator. Remember when we used to divide x over x squared, we said that we need to subtract the exponents. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So that will, will bring the x with a 1, with the exponent of 1 just in the denominator since it, have, it has a negative exponent. So I'm going to do 11 over 3 times 2, 6x, because when I divided x over x squared, this is the result, an x on the denominator. So your, your answer, your simplest form of the complex fraction that you started with is 11 over 6x. Any questions? Anything that was not clear, you can type in your answers in the questions box if you feel that you want to ask something or something that wasn't making sense. Okay, let's proceed then to a more advanced problem like this. Okay, this one looks a bit scary, but we need to keep in mind, no matter how the problem looks scary or overwhelming, we need to remind ourselves if we know the steps, if we know the order of the steps, if we do the steps correctly, then I'm not going to care about how the problem looks like. I know that this is a complex fraction, and we know how to simplify that. So, the same thing. Keep the, uh, the first fraction the same, switch division to multiplication, and then flip the second fraction, which the one is appearing here in the denominator. This is the one that's going to be flipped. So let's do that together. Equals 2. So y squared minus y over y squared minus x squared times flip this fraction y squared minus xy would be in the numerator. And then the trinomial would be in the denominator. What's next? What should we do then? Um, lots of y squares, lots of things here. What should we do? We need to use the cancellation method, but those are not numbers. Those are trinomials, binomials. Well, remember when we have talked about trinomials and binomials, we said that it is always a good idea to factor any trinomial or any binomial. So we are clear on the factors of each, and we are clear if we're going to eliminate anything in our multiplication. So let's do that to each um, term on the top and the bottom of each fraction. So y squared minus y, it's a binomial. So I am able to take out y as a common factor. So divide y squared over y will give you y minus y over y is a 1. I factored out the first numerator over y squared minus x squared. This is a binomial, but this is a special binomial. This is a difference of two perfect squares. And if you go back to that unit, you will realize that we factor this a special way as well. We're going to have y minus x and y plus x. That would be the factors for any difference of two perfect squares times y squared minus xy. I see that y 
is a common factor, then it's going to be y minus x inside the parentheses over a trinomial. So whenever I see a trinomial, I need to remember the rules on how to factor trinomials. I need two numbers. When you multiply them, you have negative 3. But when you add them, it should give you 2, positive 2. So I'm going to try to factor. Remember, not all trinomials are factorable, but we have to at least try. So if we happen to factor this out, it's going to be y and y. The signs tells me that one would have a positive sign and the other would have a negative sign. Now, wouldn't 3 and negative 1 work? Let's check. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, but add. 3 plus negative 1 is positive 2. So these are the correct factors of this trinomial. As I mentioned before, if you want to review on those um, uh, materials on how to factor trinomials or binomials, you want to go back to those webinars, and all of them are uploaded to the YouTube video, the, the YouTube channel, I'm sorry. So, so far, we have factored each of the denominators and the numer numerators. Next, let's see if anything common that we can eliminate. Well, I see... I see that y minus 1 on the top and y minus 1 on the bottom. That will cancel out. Okay. Oh, and I have y minus x and y minus x. Nothing else I'm able to eliminate. Remember, y and y will not cancel out together because both of them are in the numerator. One has to be up and the other has to be down in order to eliminate them. So, so far I have y times y, which is y squared, over, the left over here is y plus x, and the left over there times y plus three. And that's your answer. This is the simplest form of your answer, even though the answer is, is big still, but this is the, the, the simplest form that you can get y squared over y plus x times y plus 3. Any questions? Anything that was not clear? OK, let's proceed to a more challenging question. OK, so the same thing. It's a complex, complex fraction. Um, I know what to do. I'm going to switch the second um, fraction to the, to, the, to the reciprocal after I switch my problem from division to multiplication. So the first fraction will stay the same, x squared minus 2x over 2y plus 1 times, flip, so the trinomial will appear on the top, 6y squared plus 5y plus 1 over x squared minus 4. Again, whenever you see a trinomial or a binomial, we need to attempt to factor. So let's do that in order. Let's factor the first numerator. So we have x squared minus 2x. So x is a common factor. Divide x squared over x is x minus 2. And then over, we have 2y plus 1, nothing to be done in that. This is the simplest that we can get. So 2y plus 1 will stay as is. Times, let's start with the easier one here in the bottom, x squared minus 4. 4 is a perfect square. x squared is a perfect square. And there is a difference between them. Then this is a difference of two perfect squares. And we factor that by doing x with a plus once and then x with a minus and both will get the square root of the 4 which is 2. Now the top one is a trinomial. This trinomial has a leading coefficient that is not a 1. So it's a little bit longer for us or challenging for us to factor. But if you remember, we went over an easy way that I happened to learn that from my uh, high school teacher that taught us how to factor the trinomial with a not equal to 1. So let's review that real quick. 
and do the factoring this way. So we have originally 6y squared plus 5y plus 1. We said multiply a times c would be 6. So rewrite the trinomial as y squared plus 5y times, I'm sorry, y squared plus 5y plus 6, because 6 times 1 is 6. And now, if you factor this trinomial, now a is 1. We know how to do that. If we are able to find two factors, multiply, give you 6, add, give you 5, then you'll be able to arrive at the factors. Now we have y and we have y. The sign tells me that both factors will have a plus sign. The two factors I have in mind is or are 2 and 3. Let's check. Positive 2 times positive 3 is positive 6. But when you add them, it will give you positive 5. We are right. Now, because we started out with an a does not equal to 1 equal to 6, I need to write the 6 in front of each y in each set of parentheses. And then remember the step that we said that we have to do is factor out any common factor between the 6 and the 2. In this case, it's a 2. 2 will go out, and then we'll have 3y plus 1. 6 and 3, the common factor is 3. Take it out. That would be 2y plus 1. And we said back then that 3 and 2 are extra. We do not need those factors. So the factors of this trinomial on the top is or are 3y plus 1 times 2y plus 1. Okay, so we factored out the, um, the numerator on both and the denominator here, and this one stayed as is. Next, use the cancellation method. What can I cancel out? So when I multiply, I don't get too much work to do to still simplify it in my answer. Well, I have x minus 2 and x minus 2. That will go away. Oh, 2y plus 1 and 2y plus 1. That will go away. Then the leftover would be x times x times 3y plus 1 over the left over here is x plus 2. Now, I just want to, you know, touch up on something here. I see commonly, um, like I'm mistaken in our exams here. If we happen to delete those parentheses, which is which is correct, this solution with the parentheses on the on the bottom is correct. Some students they do, they do eliminate the x and the x which is incorrect. We are not able to cancel out the x with the x. This x is multiplied, it's a factor. So if we happen to have x times something, we can eliminate that x with the bottom x. But this x here is added. It's part, it's like it's one unit with the two. We cannot just cancel this out with something on the top. Unless we have x plus two and x plus two, we can cancel both of them, the whole thing together. So just as a, it's, that's a common mistake that you just wanted to point out. So let's just do the correct thing here. So that would be the final answer. Any questions? Okay, let's do a self-check question. And again, those questions are not graded. Those are given to you to try and see how far you can get with those questions. And it's the same thing, complex fraction. It has trinomial, it, it has a trinomial and some binomials. So what you should do to simplify this, I'm gonna keep my screen for about 30 to 40 seconds. If you want to copy down the question and the answers and then work on the question, and later on I'm gonna change my screen to give you the question and only the letters A, B, C, D to choose from, um, so you just share your input. So I'm gonna be quiet for about 40 seconds to give you a chance to think about that problem.
Okay, I'm going to switch my screen to give you the same question and the ability to share your answers. Here you go. I'm going to just wait for a few seconds for everyone to have a chance to participate. It feels good when you participate. Either you have the question wrong or right. It just feels good that you are a part of a team or a class that we work together. Okay, I'm going to share my answer for this question. And the right answer is C. C is the simplest form for this fraction. And the same thing, we did the factoring first. Uh, of course, we did the multiplication and the switch first, and then cancellation method after the factoring, and then we end up with this answer. Next, let's look at algebraic equations. And in your study, Eunice, there are two kinds of algebraic equations that we need to learn how to solve, linear, algebraic equations and quadratic algebraic equations. Linear algebraic equations are the equations that have only x. So even if you write out this equation later on, I'm going to show you how to do that in one line, you will end up with only x or y with no exponents. That would be linear. But if you um, switch that problem to one equation, one line, and you end up with an x squared somewhere, that would be a quadratic equation. So let's see how to solve this equation. Now, the challenge in this equation is that we have a fraction. We have an algebraic fraction here. How can we solve? The easiest way, now the study unit have two ways of doing that, and I like the cross multiplication way. Um, I think it makes sense to me, and I think it's easy to do. So I'm going to focus on that method, but if you don't like the cross multiplication, you can go ahead and read the other method in the unit. Maybe you'll like that better. So I have 15 over x minus 6 equals to 3. Back in the days when we had, um, when we had, uh, I think it's, it's, it's unit 2, if I'm not mistaken, of this course, at x over 2 equals, for example, to 3 over 10. We said, well, use cross multiplication to switch that to an equation like x times x, that would be x, 10x equals to 3 times 2 is 6, and then solve, and then you'll have the value of x, the same method. Now, the only thing that we need to, to, to you know, be careful to, 3 is a whole number, but 3 over 1 is a fraction, which is the same thing as 3. So if I'm going to rewrite my equation as 15 over x minus 6 equals to 3 over 1. I did not change anything. Now cross multiply. So cr multiply the top with the bottom and the top times the bottom. Now we need to do it this way. 3 times x minus 6. I'm going to write it out like this. 3 parenthesis times x minus 6, just to give me the right message that 3 should be multiplied to the x and to the negative 6, because some students would just multiply 3 times x and just leave the 6 as s, which is not correct. We're multiplying the whole numerator times the whole denominator. That's the first side of the equation. The second side equals 2. 15 times 1 is 15. So now it started to look like an equation in one line that we're able to kind of understand or, or remember the similarities between that and the previous ones that we solved in the past. Now, 3 times x is 3x minus 3 times 6 is 18 equals to 15. I did not do anything new. I just distributed the 3 over the x and the 6 here. Next, I need to um, combine like terms. I have 15 and negative 18. If I bring this negative 18 to this side, it will become a positive 18. It's a rule that 
also I learned in my high school years. If you uh, bring one value from one side to the other side, it will stay the same value, but the sign will be different. So it was a negative 18, bring it over there, it will positive, it will be positive 18. If I want to bring that 15 to the other side, it was positive, it will become negative 15. And just for, for those of you who are used to this method, the manual method, we're going to add 18 and add 18. It has the same effect. So that will cancel out. We're going to have 3x equals 2 and then add 15 and 18 will give you 33. Now it's an equation here. Divide over 3 to isolate the variable and divide over 3x equals to 11. How do I know that this answer is correct? Well, put the 11 in place of each x in your equation and evaluate the equation. The left-hand side should equal to the right-hand side. What I mean by that is, well, I have x equals to 11. I'm not sure if it's correct or no. Then do that, 15 over 11 minus 6 equals to 3. I'm asking myself. Evaluate this. Well, 15 over 11 minus 6 is actually 11, uh, 15 over 5. Does it equals to 3? Yes, it does. Then x equals to 11 is the correct answer. This is how you check your work. Any question? Okay, let's proceed to the second question. Now we have a fraction equal to a fraction. Same method, cross multiply. So I'm going to cross multiply 2x times 2 and then x plus 1 times 3. So I'm going to write it out like this to be clear to myself what I should do in the next line. 3 times, parenthesis, x plus 1 equals to 2 times 2x. Simplify, 3 times x is 3x, plus 3 times 1 is 3, equals to 2 times 2 is 4x. Well, I have 4x and 3x. These are like terms. These are like monomials. I am able to simplify them. So I can either bring the 3x over to, this, to the other side, or I can bring the 4x to the left side, whatever it's, it's comfortable for you to do. So I'm going to bring the 4x here. So that's a positive 4x. It will go to the other side with the opposite sign. So we will end up with 3x minus 4x plus 3. Or let's do it the traditional way, minus 4x and minus 4x. So that will cancel out. And that would be 3 minus 4x. That would be negative 1x. We don't write 1 algebra. And then plus 3 equals to 0. That's a 0 here. Well, that means if I subtracted 3 and subtracted 3, that's gone. Negative x equals to negative 3. Well, my variable has a negative 1 coefficient. I need to get rid of that. So I can just multiply the negative x times negative 1, and I have to do the same thing with the other side. So negative 1 times negative 1x is positive x, which is I want, equals to negative 3 times negative 1, positive 3. Your answer is positive 3. You're not sure? Then plug in the 3 in place of each x in your original equation. You should have the right-hand side equal to the left-hand side. If you do not have that, it means that you did something wrong in your work. Questions? Okay, let's proceed to the next example, which is more challenging. We have two fractions added on the left-hand side and another fraction on the right-hand side of the equation. What should we do? So we are not, we are not, we are not going to multiply or cross multiply because we have two fractions here. We need to combine them into one fraction. And how? Well, it's an addition, but they have different denominators. Then we need to find the LCD, the least common denominator between five and three. 
if you look at five and three, five is not a multiple of three and three is not a multiple of five. The way to do that then is to multiply five times three. And of course I have to multiply X times three and three times five and, and X times five. Let's rewrite the equation. So I didn't change anything in my equation, the same value, the same everything, just gonna look different. So it's gonna be three X over 15 plus 5x over 15 still equals to x minus 6 over 2. Now I have common denominators, so I am able to write this fraction as 3x plus 5x over 15 equals to x minus 6 over 2. Now those are common um, terms or they are like monomials I'm able to add. So add 3 and 5 is 8x over 15 equals to x minus 6 over 2. Now this looks like the ones that we had done previously. So all you have to do is cross multiply. So cross multiply and cross multiply. Let's write out the multiplication correctly. So we're going to multiply 15 times x minus 6 equals to 2 times 8x. Simplify by distributing the 15 over the x and the negative 6. So 15 times x is 15x minus 15 times 6 will give you 90 minus 90 equals to 2 times 8 Two times it will give you 16x. Not done yet. We have to continue our work there. So, so far we have 15x minus 90 equals to 16x. Okay, what's next? We'll have 16x and 15x. They are like monomials. Then you can just bring this 16 over. So that 16 was positive. It will become a negative to the other side minus 16x equals to that 90 was a negative there. Bring it over to the other side with an opposite sign. So it's going to be 90. Okay, combine 15 minus 16. It's going to be a negative x equals to 90. The x here is a negative. Then I need to multiply times negative 1 times negative 1 to keep my uh, equation balanced. Then x equals to negative 90. You're not sure? then replace every x on the original equation with a negative 90. You should have a balanced equation. Questions? Something that didn't make sense to you or you're not sure how I did get that step or why I did it? Okay, let's proceed to the, I believe, the last uh, question in that topic. It's the same thing, 3 over 3 minus x equals to 5 over 2x minus 2. I have one fraction on the left and one fraction on the right-hand side of the equation. Then I'm just going to go ahead and cross-multiply, cross-multiply. So I can do 3 times 2x minus 2 equals to 5 times everything, 3 minus x. Distribute both. 3 times 2 is 6x minus 6 equals to 15 minus 5x. Well, I see uh, like terms. I have 6x minus 5x. Bring it over to the other side. It will become positive. 5x equals to 15 well, minus or negative 6 here, bring it over to the other side with the opposite sign, so plus 6. That's just a shortcut of just adding and eliminating uh, the traditional way that we do, if you want to do it this way. Now, combine 6 and 5 is 11x equals to 15 and 6 is 21. Divide and divide over 11 then x equals to 21 over 11, or you can write it as 1 and 10 over 11. Both of them are correct. And again, you can substitute that in place of each x 
and you should get a balanced equation. Let's proceed to a self check if you don't have any questions for me so far in that topic. Okay, let's do the question. The same thing. 2u plus 3 over 3 equals 2. 2u over 5. Fraction equals to a fraction. Then the first step I'm going to do is exactly. I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to leave you think about that. I'm going to change my screen in about 30 to 40 seconds so to give you a chance to work on that problem. I'm going to change my screen to give you the question one more time and you are able to input your answers. Okay, I'm going to share my final answers so you're able when you get the recording or if you want to go to the YouTube channel and pause on those um, questions. If you don't have time to do it right now, the answer is C. C is the value of U that makes this equation correct or balanced or true. Let's then move on to quadratic algebraic equations. How can we solve that? The same idea. The only difference is instead of just combining like terms and dividing over a value to find x, we're going to have to maybe factor trinomials. OK, so we have 3x over 5 equals to 3x over x plus 1. Fraction equals to a fraction, then cross multiply cross-multiplying, cross-multiply. So I'm going to have 3x times 2x plus 1 equals to 3x times 5, or 5 times 3x. It's not going to matter. Now distribute 3x times x will give you 3x squared. And that's why we call it quadratic equations, those quadratic algebraic equations. 3x times 1 is 3x equals 2. 3x times 5 is 15x. Okay. Well, I see 15x and 3x. Then these are like terms. I'm able to combine so 3x squared plus 3x. This 15 was positive on the right-hand side of the equation. Bring it to the left with a negative sign equals to 0. Now combine those terms. So 3x squared doesn't have a matching, so it's going to stay the same. 3 minus 15 will give you negative 12x equals to zero. Now, I don't have a trinomial, I have a binomial, but I'm able to look and see that there are some common factors. I have x squared and x, then a common factor would be x. I have also 3 and, and 12, then a common factor is 3. So 3x, I'm going to factor out 3x, divide 3x squared over 3x will give you x minus 4 equals to zero. Remember, in unit 2, uh, we talked about, or maybe it was unit 5, if, if I'm not mistaken, the one about quadratic equations. Um, we talked about the zero property. So when you end up with a factor times a factor equals to zero, the property says that either one factor, the first factor equals to zero, or the other factor has to equal to, to zero in order to give us the zero on the right-hand side of the equation. And from there, we solve 
over 3 and over 3, then x equals to 0. That's a value of x. A second value of x would be x equals to 4. Now, you may be wondering why we have two solutions for this problem. Well, this is a quadratic equation. x squared will, will always, or most of the cases, will end up with two solutions. So the two solutions that if you, if you put in place of each x on your original equation that will make that equation true are 0 and 5. Sorry, 0 and 4. So that's it. So in, just to summarize, we cross multiplied, we factored, and we solved. That's it. Let's look at another kind of equations. Now, 2 times that, let's write this because we're going to cross multiply. That would be our first step since we have a fraction equals to a fraction. Now, I'm repeating myself because the more you hear things, the more it becomes kind of a second nature. When you look at the question, you know right away what would be the first step. Okay, so multiply. We're going to have 2 times 3x minus 3 equals 2x times x plus 1. Distribute 2 times 3 is 6x minus 6 equals 2. x times x is x squared plus x. Now, I have x and 6x. I know that I'm able to combine that. So, I'm going to do that this way. I'm used to have the squared variable on the left-hand side. So, I'm just going to um, switch my equation. So, I'm going to write it out like this x squared, just for convenience, equals to 6x minus 6. I did not change any signs, nothing. I just flipped my equation, so I'm used to have the x squared on my left-hand side. Now, I can bring the 6x over to the left side. It was a positive, it will become a negative. So, x squared plus x minus 6x. And then I'm, always, I'm also can bring the negative 6 over that will have a positive sign equals to 0. Combine the like terms, x squared plus will have x minus 6, that will be actually minus 5. So that would be minus 5 because 1 minus 6 will give you negative 5x and then plus 6 equals to 0. Now look at this. It's a trinomial. If we are able to find two factors of 6, when you multiply them, it will give you positive 6, but when you add, it will give you negative 5, then this trinomial can be factorable. And from there, we are able to find the values of x. Now let's try equals to 0. I know I hung out, I'm going to have an x minus and x minus. Looking at the signs, I know that both of them will have a minus sign. Now, 3 and 2 are the ones. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, but when you add, it will give you negative 5. So, this is the ones I'm looking for. Use the 0 property, then either this factor is a 0, or this factor is the 0. So I'm going to do x minus 3 equals to 0, or x minus 2 equals to 0. Solve. x equals to 3. Bring it over to the other side with a positive sign. The same thing, x equals to 2. And these are the values of x that makes this equation correct or true. And that's it. So in the previous question, we factored, but we, we just factored a binomial a different way. In this question, we did the same thing, cross multiply and factor. But instead of just factoring a, a binomial, we had a trinomial. So use the correct way of factoring a trinomial. And we did, and we used the zero property, and then we ended up with two solutions for x. Let's look at a final question on that topic. x over 4 equals 2, x minus 4 over x. 
well, fraction equals to a fraction, then cross multiply. So cross multiply and cross multiply. So you can do x times x is x squared, of course, equals to 4 times x minus 4. Okay, now x squared equals to 4x minus 16. Okay, well, a half x squared and a, and a number times x and then a number, that looks like a trinomial. Just bring it together on the left-hand side. So let's do that quickly. So x squared, positive 4x to the left side will become with a negative sign. The 16 was a negative, then bring it over with a positive sign. Now, I know that I changed the signs on that um, uh, question. So instead of x minus 4, I would like to have it x plus 4. And that would make that x plus 4. When we multiply 4 times 4, will give you positive 16. When you bring it over to the other side, it will become negative 16. I just wanted to make it right for the purpose of showing you how to use the quadratic formula. So we have now x squared minus 4x minus 16 equals to 0. Trinomial, try to factor. Factors of 16. When you multiply them, it's negative 16. But when you add them, it's negative 4. You will not find any. You are not able to manually factor this trinomial using the method that we have used in the last question. The other option is, if you remember from unit 5, the quadratic formula. It's a standard formula that we use whenever we are not able to follow the manual um, method for factoring. And for that uh, method, we need to identify our a's, our a, b, and c. Our a is the leading coefficient, which is 1. Our b is the coefficient for the x here which is negative 4, negative 4. And then C would be the last value here. It is a negative 16. All we have to do then is simply plug in those values in this standard formula, evaluate correctly, and that will give us the values of X. Let's do that together just to refresh our memories on the formula. So I'm going to do, well, X equals 2 negative b so the negative is part of the formula so negative b but b itself is negative so negative negative b plus or minus because we have two solutions it's x squared remember the square root of b squared so negative 4 everything squared minus 4 times a is 1 times c is negative 16 I'm done with the top, over 2a. So 2 times 1 is just 2, equals 2. Let's evaluate. Negative, negative 4 is 4, positive 4, plus or minus the square root of. Well, the, 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 the square of negative 4, when you square negative 4, is negative 4 times negative 4 will give you positive 16. Now we have negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times negative 16 will give you a positive 64 over 2. I'm getting closer. Equals to 4 plus or minus the square root of add 16 and 64 will give you 80 under the square root sign. And you still have over 2. Equals to, if I'm not mistaken, um, unit 4, we dealt with how to simplify a square root expression like this. I'm going to remind you of that too. So 4 plus or minus. Well, I can break down the 80 to 16 because it's a perfect square times 5. Because 16 times 5 will give you the 80. But I chose 16 to be one of the factors because actually I know the square root of 16. It's a 4. So that way... I'm able to write the answer as 4 plus or minus. The square root of 16 is 4, and I have 5 left over under the sign over 2. Equals to 
I can further simplify and I see that I can divide 4 over 2 and 4 over 2. So the 2 will go and that would be 2 plus or minus 2 to the square root of 5. So the answers would be answer number 1, either x equals to 2 plus 2 to the square root of 5 or x equals to 2 minus 2 to the square root of 5. So these are the two solutions that if you want to try and plug each one in place of each x on the original equation, it should give you a balanced equation. Questions on this problem? Anything that was not clear? You can type in your question in the questions box if you have a question. Okay, let's move on to the last self-check for this webinar, solve. 12t over 4 equals to t squared. Okay, well, the t squared is just t squared. It's not t squared over something, but I'm able to change that to a fraction form. I'm going to leave you to do that and think about it. And I'll put myself in quiet until you think about this, and then later on you can share your answers. Okay, I'm going to put the question up one more time, a different screen, and you're able to share your answers here. What would be the two solutions of T that makes that equation on the top true? Okay. Okay. The answer is A. A would be the right answer. Now, I'm not going to do the question, all, all of the question, but down the solution, you're going to have something that says 4t times t minus 3 equals to 0. And then you're going to say, well, 4t equals to 0 or t, equal, t minus 3 equals to 0. But remember, you have to add 3 and add 3. So t equals to positive 3, or it's also going to equal to 0. So your two solutions would be 0 or 3. Any questions on that problem? Because both of you guys had the, the B as the answer. So um, let me know if you suspect something not true or because I see my uh, work out and I think it's true. So um, my my guess is that when you saw the T minus 3, you just assume that T equals to minus 3 or negative 3. Okay, so... We did learn how to simplify complex fractions and how to solve linear and quadratic algebraic fractions. Now, how to prepare for the exam? I know that in that exam, lots of fractions, lots of factoring, lots of eliminations and everything like that. So take your time reading the study in it. Take your time watching the recorded webinar, um, either from the follow-up email that will, um, will reach you or um, on our YouTube channel. Take your time doing the exercises within your unit, and we provide the answer keys for those exercises for a purpose, because we want you to learn from the mistakes that you may have done in the questions that you've attempted. Um, 
the study unit is so when you sign up for algebra one uh, within your portal you are able to see the lessons um, and within the lesson they will have like discover more questions or sometimes they call them practice questions so if you're not signed up with algebra for algebra you're not going to be able of course to view the lessons but if you're signed up and you cannot find the um, the units you can email uh, the school um, and I'm going to show you in a little bit how to email the school if you really signed up for algebra, but you cannot find the lessons anywhere. Also, there is an extra resource. It's an outside resource, not a pin faster resource, but it's not mandatory. But if you like, you can go to conacademy.org and on the top left, they have subjects. Click on that and then choose Algebra 2. And from Algebra 2, choose the rational expressions and rational expression the same as algebraic fractions the same thing and then you want to go to the lesson that says solving rational equations and that will correspond to today's webinar and it's not required but if you have if you're curious to know more and learn more you can go there how can you get help you can call uh, during weekdays from 9 to 6 Eastern time. Um, if the instructor is not available, teacher assistants will be there. If the teacher assistants are just gone for the day, um, you can just send us an email. Um, if you need an appointment to speak to a person about one specific topic on your lesson, you can use that link for the math courses here and choose the course and choose the topic and choose the time. And we call you back on that specific time and date. If you have a brief question that you don't want to call for or email and just wait for a response, you can send a message, text message to 39033. If you have an academic uh, question like what's my GPA or why did I get that question wrong in my math exam, you can just text learn to that number and one of us will help you with that. If you have a general question, you can type in coach. If you have a financial question, you can type in help. And as, as I said before, the YouTube channel has many playlists. One of them is the math playlist. And so far, I have uploaded all of the previous webinars. And um, by the end of this week, I'm going to upload today's webinar as well, if you want to have a look at everything that we have for this course. How to email your instructor. Um, some of you will have this kind of an account, so you just want to follow those steps on the boxes, and that will um, make you email a question or inquiry to your instructor. And some of you have this kind of account. Really, the course is the same, exams are the same, just the look of the account. You want that to um, follow the steps on the, in those boxes and you'll be able to email. Also, another feature that we have recently added is the chat. So you can also chat. If you have an academic um, question or a financial question, any kind of question, you're able to chat. Just make sure that your inquiry, if you're going to use chat, would be like a brief thing. It's not like fighting over, you know, um, payment that was withdrawn from credit card and, and things like that. If you have like a brief question, you can use chat or text messages. And that's it. Thank you for your attendance and your participation. Uh, it means a lot to me. Uh, there is a survey uh, that you can take three questions and you're able to take that right now. Or when you get the follow up email, you are able to watch the webinar one more time and then think about your experience and take the survey. It's only three short questions. It will tell me how I did and uh, how beneficial or useful that webinar um, is and how I can improve in the future. So I appreciate your feedback. Do you have any questions I can answer? Well, if you think of any questions later on after we conclude our webinar, you have now, you know now how to email, chat, text message, or just call and communicate your questions. Thank you so much for your attendance, and I wish you all the best in the exam.